Jason Kenney's United Conservative Party has won a majority in the Alberta provincial election. Working day and night to renew the Alberta advantage, to renew this province as a place of hope and opportunity for generations to come, an Alberta that is strong and free. In his victory speech, Kenny promised to take on Ottawa over stalled pipeline projects. He also said he would fight outside interests, who he accused of trying to sabotage Alberta's economy. Kenny's UCP is projected to take 62 of 87 seats, unofficial numbers. Uh, it defeated Rachel Notley's NDP, which took power in 2015. She says she will stay on as leader of the opposition. Good morning, I'm Heather Hiscox. Also today, CBC News has learned voters in Newfoundland and Labrador will soon be going to the polls. Premier Dwight Ball is expected to meet with the province's lieutenant governor this morning. And sources tell CBC the election will happen on May the 15th. The province had a fixed date election set for October, but the premier said he didn't want the provincial vote to interfere with the federal election. France has announced it will hold an international competition for architects to design a new spire for the Notre Dame Cathedral destroyed in Monday's fire. The president, Emmanuel Macron, also laid out an ambitious timeline for the reconstruction. Nous rebâtirons la cathédrale Notre Dame plus belle encore. In his televised address to the nation last night, Macron said Notre Dame would re be rebuilt even more beautiful than before and in five years. Now, some architectural experts say that's very optimistic, that in fact it could take decades. The fundraising drive to save the building is closing in on the equivalent of one and a half billion Canadian dollars, much of that money donated by France's two wealthiest businessmen. RCMP in Penticton, B.C. have charged the the suspect in Monday's shooting, John Britton, faces three counts of first-degree murder and one count of second-degree murder. Four people were shot to death on Monday at two separate locations in the town. Police are still searching for a motive. For the very latest, tune in to CBC News Network or go to cbcnews.ca. Let's look in a little more depth at what is today's top story at home. Jason Kenney's big win in Alberta. To the unemployed, to those who have given up, to the small business owners barely hanging on, to the young people who got their degrees and their diplomas but can't find work, to those who have lost their homes and their hope after years of economic decline and stagnation, to them, to them, we send this message. Help is on the way and hope is on the horizon. Jobs, the economy, energy, all key themes in Kenny's victory speech last night in Calgary. His party, the United Conservative Party, won a clear majority over Rachel Notley's NDP. As I was mentioning, the unofficial count is 62 seats for the UCP out of 87 in the provincial legislature. The Prime Minister congratulated Kenny this morning in a statement saying he looks forward to working with the UCP government on jobs, infrastructure and key industries. He he also says Ottawa and Alberta will work together on issues including canola exports, climate change and getting natural resources to market. Federal Conservative leader Andrew Scheer is taking Kenny's win as a sign of things to come in the upcoming federal election. He tweeted negative and nasty personal attacks didn't work in Alberta. And in October, Justin Trudeau will learn that they won't work for him. Canadians will see through his fear and smear. Let's pick, on some up, uh, pick up rather on some of those ideas. You have seen her coverage in these past few days out of Edmonton, the host of Power and Politics here on CBC News Network, coming home to Ottawa but talking to us before she does. Vashi Capello. So good morning, Vashi. Morning, Heather. Here we are the morning after the election before, and in the end, it was that sweeping victory for Jason Kenney and the UCP the polls were predicting. So let me ask you, why did Jason Kenney win? And conversely, why did Rachel Notley lose? I think, and, and this is just my sense after having talked to people that in the end, and, and I know, I'm sure you've heard this from a lot of people, it was quote unquote the economy that dominated people's thinking as they as they went into the ballot box. And I would I would take it a step further because 
yesterday we spoke and I said I had the feeling, speaking to people, that there was uh, a heightened sense that the outcome of this election would directly affect their personal livelihood. There are a lot of people, it's hard to underestimate and it's hard to sort of translate across the rest of the country, but there are a lot of people here who truly, like yesterday someone said to me, the recession is real, <laughs> who truly have felt the impact of, uh, of what's happened over the last four years. Tens of thousands of people who have lost their jobs. I don't think that they necessarily were casting a ballot for what they thought was a sure thing. I think it's sort of being portrayed that way. I, I don't necessarily get that sense. I don't think they were thinking, you know what, I'm going to get a job tomorrow. We're going to get that pipeline built tomorrow if Jason Kenney wins. I think what they thought was, whatever happened over the past four years, even if uh, they had a plan and they tried their best, I'm not employed now. I, my job prospects aren't better. That pipeline, there's no shovel in the ground. So I'm willing to give someone else who has a different vision a shot. And especially if it might positively impact sort of my livelihood in the end. And I think that's true of sort of democracies around the world. If, if in fact, the outcome of an election does impact you personally in a very tangible way, which in a fortunate country like the one we live in isn't always the case, uh, you, you just it's just a different sense. It's a different feeling. And I think I do think that they were. They were willing to give Jason Kenney the benefit of the doubt and see what might transpire over the over the next four years, and that's because of sort of their own uh, their own struggles right now in this province. So it is a provincial election, as we were talking yesterday, but one with major national implications. So let's look to the federal uh, ramifications of this now. We heard Jason Kenney speak last night at length about Alberta's relationship with Ottawa and as well with the rest of the provinces. What did he say and what will we see? I think that he reflected what, again, I've been hearing from a lot of people here, and whether you agree with it or not, or you want to debate the sort of rationale behind it, there is a lot of palpable anger in this province directed towards the federal government right now, particularly Justin Trudeau. If you heard him last night, that speech that he gave, some of the and some of the things that were spoken there, the biggest boos were saved for Justin Trudeau. Have a listen to a little bit of what Mr. Kenny had to say. There is a deep frustration in this province a sense that we have contributed massively to the rest of Canada, but that everywhere we turn, we are being blocked in and pinned down. And what really stood out to me was not only statements like that, but a particular point of the speech in which Mr. Kenny started speaking in French and appealing directly to people in Quebec. He sort of had to say, you know, stay with me, everybody here, uh, because in the past they've booed, for example, Calgary Mayor Nahed Nenshi for speaking French. There's a lot of resentment here towards Quebec as well. But he directly spoke in French, making an appeal to the people of Quebec and, and somewhat of Alberta that, uh, you know, that, that sort of more unifying message. Yes, there's anger. Yes, there's frustration. But let's try and work together. What will be interesting to see is on whose terms. So a little bit more on that, if we could, Vashi, just for a moment or two, because yes, there was an appeal, and yes, there was French, but at the same time, we know that he, he did promise a referendum on the whole question of equalization payments, you know, turning off the money uh, if, if, if there's no pipeline. So that kind of leverage trying to bring to bear, and we already know he's already threatened to turn off the taps to BC if it stands in the way of the pipeline plan. So although there's an appeal, I mean, there's a, there's a heavy-handed uh, approach in the mm -hmm. offing too. Yeah, very much so. And, and particularly what will be, I think, interesting to see and might be unique to Mr. Kenny is generally during campaigns, the rhetoric is amped up and there is no doubt that it was here. You hit on all the right points there, the sort of, uh, you know, anger that bled through a lot of the different policy promises uh, directed at the rest of Canada vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Kenny. Normally, for politicians, if they campaign at that level of rhetoric, it gets toned down uh, when they start to govern because the, the, you're at the beginning of the mandate, that kind of stuff isn't always necessary, uh, and the rhetoric doesn't always work once you start governing. I don't know if that will be the case here. I, I really don't. Uh, Mr. Kenny has a sort of, uh, 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 he's not, no, you know, he, he is a fighter, and, and he was at the federal level too. And, and I'm not saying that in a, in a judgmental way, one way or the other, but I think that you, you would not expect him to sort of all of a sudden start cowering away from those promises. I'll say on the equalization point, though, it is contingent on the pipeline. That pipeline could be uh, approved as early as, I believe, it's May 22nd. Uh, so I, I, there are a number of uh, kind of sort of other factors factors, mitigating factors there as well uh, that could, you know, prevent that from happening. But if it does, that that referendum might not happen. However, the turn off the tap stuff, uh, the, uh, the the sort of uh, concealed um, rhetoric towards or not concealed but last night 
more diminished rhetoric towards Quebec. Uh, I don't know how that will all play out, but I, I don't imagine we're going to see a real total softening sort of, of, of the way in which Mr. Kenny approaches uh, the relationship with the rest of Canada. He will make his presence felt, very likely. And Vashi, he'll be a subject for your program, I'm sure, on many evenings. So we'll look forward to your you next installment. Thanks for everything leading up to today. Uh, Vashi Capellos from Power and Politics in Edmonton. The top story for us this morning has been Jason Kenney's big win in Alberta. To the unemployed, to those who have given up, to the small business owners barely hanging on, to the young people who got their degrees and their diplomas but can't find work, to those who have lost their homes and their hope after years of economic decline and stagnation. To them, to them we send this message. Help is on the way and hope is on the horizon. There was part of the victory speech last night in Calgary as Kenny promised hope and jobs and a better economy. The United Conservative Party won a rousounding victory over Rachel Notley's NDP, 63 seats, the unofficial total for the UCP, 63 out of 87. The congratulations coming in from the Prime Minister congratulating Kenny and saying that he looks forward to working with the UCP on jobs, infrastructure and key industries. He also says Ottawa and Alberta will work together on issues including canola exports, climate change, getting natural resources to market. Federal Conservative leader Andrew Scheer uh, may be taking the win as a sign of things to come. He tweeted this, negative and nasty personal attacks did not work in Alberta and in October Justin Trudeau will learn that they won't work for him. Canadians will see through his fear and smear. Those things raise issues that I want to talk about now with our national affairs editor, Chris Hall, who's in Ottawa today, but he's certainly spent a whole lot of time of late in Alberta putting together some fantastic programming. Thank you for coming in this morning, Chris, for us. Thanks, Heather. You watched Jason Kenney for years in federal politics in Ottawa. From, what, from that experience and exposure from watching him last night and during the campaign, what kind of premier will Jason Kenney be? He will be a confident premier, someone who will be quick to, I think, off the mark to begin to enact the things that he has promised, including uh, repealing the, the carbon price scheme that's in place in Alberta, lifting the cap on emissions on the oil sands, uh, and obviously trying to create economic growth. Uh, you know, over the time that he was here, Heather, he was, I think, one of maybe a handful, John Baird, the late Jim Flaherty come to mind, uh, members of the Harper government, uh, who was free to speak to the media and he would engage. He's a very effective communicator, and in that sense, I think he's very different from a Doug Ford and a Brian Pallister and a Scott Moe, the other conservatives uh, who are in power and also opposed to the climate plan as put forward by the federal government. So it will be interesting to see what role he takes, leadership role among the various premiers who are opposed to Justin Trudeau's plans, uh, but also in terms of advocating forcefully for Alberta. We've heard him talk about a referendum on equalization, for example. Uh, he is someone who knows the value of a grandiose uh, statement and someone who knows how to put things into action when he needs to. When when you mention those other premiers, he certainly spoke of an alliance of some of the premiers who are indeed aligned on, on many of their policy positions and the challenge, the united front that they may present to Ottawa. So although this is a provincial election, it obviously has national implications. And what effect do you think his win is going to have in Ottawa and on federal policy? A couple of things. Just at the, the sort of superficial level, it will embolden, I think, the federal conservatives to, to be able to attack the, uh, the liberal government and Justin Trudeau, particularly around climate. Uh, there is also this pipeline that uh, the federal government has vowed to build, but that was when Rachel Notley was in power and when Rachel Notley had a climate action plan uh, in place, so that dynamic will change. You know, I, I look at Justin uh, Trudeau and how he responds to Jason Kenney uh, as a sign of what, might, what the federal election might look like and what issues are uh, the, the liberals here federally might try to draw uh, clearly climate will be the most important one but on the idea of trying to build an economy that is uh, concentrating for example on renewable energy and then another thing that uh, Jason Kenney has promised to do is get rid of the incentives for solar and wind power renewable energy uh, we'll see if they're clearly able to draw that distinction not just between the federal liberals and the federal conservatives but the federal liberals and what conservative premiers including Jason Kenney now stand for I want to come back to um, the 
conservative stake in the election campaign in just a moment, but since you, you mentioned, again, the dynamic between Jason Kenney and the Prime Minister, you know, people have remarked that it was almost like Kenney was running against Trudeau and not Rachel Notley at many points of the campaign, certainly Trudeau policies. So what do you think the dynamic is going to be like, the tone is going to be like between them uh, in their dealings in the future? I don't think there's any question that Canada became a more difficult country to govern for the federal Liberals. It's not just that another ally, if I can call Rachel Notley an ally on some key files, uh, went down to defeat yesterday. Uh, it's because Kenny is such a well-known commodity and such an effective speaker. Uh, he's not the style of a Doug Ford, who I would argue also ran against the federal Liberals in the last uh, Ontario election campaign. Uh, he's someone who actually knows how Ottawa works. He's got a broad base, not just uh, in Alberta, but across the country from like minded conservatives. So I think for uh, Justin Trudeau, this will become a major challenge. And I would expect that, you know, if you're Justin Trudeau, you might want to put Andrew Scheer in as almost, almost a supplicant of Jason Kenney. Who's ordering who? Who's the leader here of the federal conservatives? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to hear some of that language in the days ahead. Exactly where I wanted to go with you next, because I, if we can bring back up that Andrew Scheer tweet, I mean, he certainly looked to it as being sort of a, uh, throwing down the gauntlet to Trudeau what he was going to face in the campaign to come. But he does have, in Alberta now, Jason Kenney. He does have, th this is Andrew Scheer I'm speaking about, yeah. he does have Doug Ford in Ontario, different but still very much a strong figure. Uh, leaders that may, some think, overshadow Andrew Scheer in some ways. Does, does Jason Kenney pose in fact, a challenge, or is he more of an ally uh, of Andrew Scheer? You know, that's a really interesting question. For example, this referendum that would be held on equalization. Remember, Jason Kenney was part of the Harper government that brought in the new formula for right. equalization. The argument he makes uh, that somehow Alberta is not getting its fair share, it's not getting the same kind of generosity that it's shown to the Federation over the years is one that will resonate. The problem for Andrew Scheer, though, is that he has two leaders whose primary interests are Alberta, and Ontario and what they do, the policies they bring in when it comes to a federal election may hurt. So if you're cutting dramatically, if you're getting out of renewable energy, uh, if you're throwing up roadblocks to national programs, uh, that could work against Andrew Scheer. So I think he has to be very careful to sit down with all of them and say, here's what I intend to do in the next federal election. Here's my climate plan when I decide to release it. Uh, I need you guys to get on board and not to undercut that by saying your own things and being on a different page than me. Uh, for Andrew Scheer, I think the challenges are a little less extreme than they are for Justin Trudeau with Jason Kenney joining the ranks of the Conservative Premiers, uh, but it's still going to be a difficult file to manage. It's always great to get your insight. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Heather. Our National Affairs Editor, Chris Hall, who's in our Ottawa newsroom this morning.